Hello, welcome to episode 2 of our Ostrov Alpha 4.5 Season 2 Let's Play. It is December of 1721 in our new town, and we have a nice beginning here. We've got nine houses, we've got a smithy, we have our thatchery, we have some hay storage, and we have a forestry operating. So, some goals for today's episode is we should begin doing some livestock stuff, maybe build the town hall. Potentially. Uh, I do want to get a farm up and running before the planting season happens. But before we do that, we really probably should think about building a trading post so we can get livestock and everything. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the requirements for that. Looks like we will be able to do that. We have uh, 486 nails it's going to require and we should have... Okay, so we don't quite have enough nails, but we are making nails. We do have the iron, and we do have people working in the smithy. We've got a little bit more iron, so we really we really need to make sure we get some more iron coming in. So, what we're going to do... I don't want to build the trading post up here at the top like I did in the last, uh, the last town. One, because we don't have anything up here. And two, because I'm going to try and make a concerted effort to not just have everything be completely on a single grid in this newer town. So I think one way to kind of get around that is to not necessarily put things at weird angles, but just kind of freely place items and let things organically connect to each other. So I think I'm going to place this guy right here. Probably, yeah, let's just do that. Let's see if I can get it to kind of line up, but not completely on the grid. So they'll be building that, and while they're doing that, let's look for a space probably should start with sheep or cattle because we have hay already being harvested. Um, probably cattle so we can have the oxen for the farm as well. So let's go ahead and pick a spot for a cow shed. So if you remember we also have a farm to think about. Probably we're going to put the farm somewhere up here because there's a lot of open space and down here of course is the river. So in keeping with that, go ahead and put a cow shed um, not too close to this. Let's try putting a cow shed maybe right here. And then we'll put the farm somewhere in the same general area. But again, we don't want it to be too uniform. We could put the... We could actually put the farm and the cow shed kind of in the same general area and have like a, a big fenced-in farm adjacent type thing and maybe put another house next to it. Pretend that the people who uh, operate the farm live there just for aesthetics sake. And we also want to make sure that the gateway to the farm is facing where the fields are going to be, just to make that a little cleaner. So we'll put this right there. Make sure that's all fine and dandy, good to go. And we'll see if any men are looking for jobs. Not really, but we are going to go ahead and prioritize building if we can. We can't really mess with any of this stuff because we don't have a town hall quite yet. I think building some of this stuff is a little more important than having that level of granular control. So we will see exactly how long that takes. Man, the game runs so much smoother when you don't have 1,400 people, right? This is buttery smooth. And I did receive a comment from someone watching episode one that the weird white lines could possibly be helped by turning off uh, one of these, one of these settings, uh, post-processing. Of course, it's going to have to restart the game, but we'll go ahead and uncheck that and see if that actually does anything. We might try it. If we get any white lines, I might just restart the game and see if that stops coming up. But this is going to take a, a little bit of time to get going here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire someone from the forestry because we do have enough wood, or we should have enough wood at least, to build this. And, uh, We'll try and get them on the building train. Because we should all have the two guys that can go do the whole thing, you know. I might go ahead, actually, and put the farm out first, because I know it's going to be more important to have that done. Even if we don't have the cattle to do the plowing, we are going to want to have the farm ready to go. And this should be a lot quicker to build. Now, thatch-wise... We can go ahead and have all the women working because just turn off higher men and they'll get to, uh, to work doing all that stuff. 
as soon as this is filled, I guess it's going to be 2,000 thatch. I don't want to dedicate uh, building resources just yet to building a warehouse, but we do need to make sure we are manufacturing thatch. And this farm shouldn't be too long to build. They do have to get a bunch of stuff, and we do just have these three carts, so we also need to be thinking about cart where these will be wearing out pretty soon. And if they are not repaired, it's going to be pretty miserable trying to get stuff uh, taken care of there. So, yeah, you can see very, very quickly how you have to really ramp up with the... Uh, I don't know, my mind just blanked the uh, production and the maintenance of stuff. So we'll go ahead and just pop this guy right here, just for convenience sake. That might end up getting moved. I just want to make sure we actually, you know, have one of those done. Because these will be wearing out at some point. And I'll just go ahead and have that there. And they just need the thatch. So I think they are, yeah, they're, they're making it now. And they're gradually depleting all these things. But the moment this farm is done, we're going to have them probably have to build a trading post so we don't run out of... I don't know, I keep changing my mind, but you just, uh, yeah, see there's the message right there. It says the carts are wearing out. That's always something important to uh, stay abreast of. But it looks like they've got everything except the thatch, and that should be coming relatively soon. So we should be in pretty good shape to take care of that. I just hope they are able to build relatively quickly here. Yeah, see, we're, we're almost there. Just waiting on them to go ahead and finish the construction of this. You know, sometimes you just have to sit here and wait. That's fine. That's what a lot of this game is anyway, right? Hurry up and wait. So I think we now are dipping into, yeah, what they're actually manufacturing here. And I'm interested to see what this big house ends up growing. If you watched the last Let's Play, you're going to recall the one house with the enormous apiary that was all honey, and they had 110 or 120,000 honey at some point toward the end of that playthrough. I'm hoping that doesn't happen again because that makes it basically impossible for anybody else to grow any honey. And they didn't really feel like selling much of their stuff either. It's really good that we have all this uh, this hay right here because we can go ahead and resupply the farm for the oxen when they arrive. And we won't really have to worry about anything starving, which is, you know, always preferential to the alternative. All right, so now they can actually finish this, hopefully sooner rather than later. Then we'll be able to start placing our fields and getting things ready for our first harvest season. Again, I love watching this stuff go up. It's just super satisfying. Really, really something special here. And you also, actually, let's go ahead, while we're doing this, we can go ahead and pause. Look how thick the thatch is. And I know in real life, thatch is typically somewhere around a foot thick, depending on climate and uh, building style. But this is its just so wonderful, the detail in the game. You can see it actually gets thicker as it goes down. And that could just be because of the way the texture is rendered. But they actually took the time to make sure it had some sort of thickness to it. It's not just a flat thing. I don't know. I just like the game, honestly. They've done a really, really great job with it. And this actually couldn't come a moment too soon because we are very close to uh, having that done. So yeah, we'll go ahead and give it a slowdown here while they go and work on the trading post. And this, of course, means we can go ahead and supply for Ox. We'll go ahead and order those, even though we don't have the animals. That way I don't forget about it later. We'll hire a manager. And we can actually uncheck hire men. We'll just have the women working there. But we'll go ahead and put in a field. And yes, before you ask, we will be doing a, uh, a grid base for our fields. One, because we kind of have to. There's not really any way around that. And two, because that's just the, the best way of doing it. At some point, we might do irregularly shaped fields, but for the purposes of actually getting, you know, crop yields, which is kind of the point of a farm. How long is too long? My god, okay. 50... And by virtue of just, you know, being human, I'm probably not going to make this perfectly square anyway. Like, there is a little tiny bit of leeway with the 50-50-50-50 thing. So, you know, live and you learn. 
So we get 50 here. And we're going to have to have a couple trees cut down here anyway. Which is fine. It gives our forestry guys something to do. 50, 50, 50, 50. Nine trees. We'll go ahead and do that. We're going to do a couple more as well. Now we are going to try this trick that somebody left in my comment section during the last Let's Play. You get to 50 units and then you right click and then you come back from that same spot. So you know you have 50 and then you can go to this one. And then you can just go to 50, 50, 50, 50 and be done. And I think that's a fantastic trick to have. It's just all sorts of, you know, wisdom that you end up getting when people watch you uh, play the game. They tell you what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right or sometimes just have some helpful suggestions. And for the life of me, I cannot remember who sent that into the comment section. So if that was you, thank you. If not, well, thank you anyway. That's fine. Everybody has good ideas. So we've got four fields. Well, technically three because this one is uh, still being handled with the tree demolition. But we're going to go ahead and get stuff set up here, starting with potatoes and buckwheat. And of course, before we start plowing, this is going to be a... Uh, less than optimal thing but you know it'll be fine we'll go ahead and get two of these exact same potato and buckwheat pairings going so we can start building up stuff and of course we'll advance this one to buckwheat go ahead and activate that one and that one this one down here we're going to turn into just wheat and wheat and then another fallow after that activate that this one will have to wait and we'll go ahead and put Another field here, just to take up space and start getting some other stuff done as well. This is just such a nice time saving, time shaving, excuse me, time saving trick to have all of this stuff in one nice little space here, as well as having the farm be the correct amount of uh, spaces here. You see, it's not perfectly straight; it goes a little bit to the right here. But that's more than fine. So we have two fields right here that are potatoes and buckwheat. We have this one that's going to be regular wheat. This one will also be regular wheat. This one is going to end up being sunflowers and hemp. Possibly flax, actually, because hemp and flax can both be used to make cloth. So you know what? We'll just, we'll just call this one hemp and flax, or hemp and sunflower and flax. It's been a long day. We'll do one more to get our six fields. And depending on how everything goes. We might not be able to have enough people here to actually get stuff harvested. We'll find out. But um, I'm going to do another one of the sunflower and flax, but actually this one could be hemp. And we'll put that one on hemp. This one, of course, is on sunflowers. It's activated. And that'll be fine. That way we shouldn't have two fields that are fallow at the same time. If we have everybody in the town when harvest season, or planting season rather, starts, everyone working as a laborer, it should be able to get that done. But now we are all well and set up. Everything is supplied here. And uh, yeah, should be in pretty good shape. We'll just have to remember to turn on hiring for that once uh, planting season shows up. Meanwhile, over at the trading post here, this is... Uh, not going super fast, but, you know, there's not too much you can do. We're going to take this opportunity to go ahead and save. I have multiple save files here, just in case. And I have backed these up to a different folder in case something cataclysmic happens. But I do have two in case one breaks. So that is a huge load off my shoulders in terms of keeping, uh, keeping track of that stuff. And they're still collecting a lot of stuff for this trading post. It just, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a while, just by virtue of how this tends to work. Seems they have enough nails, so I am going to go ahead and fire one of these guys from the smithy just so they can start working at the camp center as a constructor or builder, whatever you want to call it. We're running low. We're not out of iron. As long as the trading post is built before the uh, where we run out of iron and we have the nails actually gathered here. So we are very close to needing to have all of this stuff start being planted here. 
So I think, I don't think the manager will do, okay, so the laborers will actually plant, which is good because this is all the women anyway. So we can go ahead and fire them from the thatchery so they go plant at the farm. I had forgotten that we were, uh, we're doing it that way. So that's actually really good. That gives them something to do. And uh, it's not like we need a ton of thatch right now anyway, because we do have some stored up. And they don't need any for the training post because it has wood shingles on the top of the building. So they will be uh, quite busy for a little bit of time. And our men are hard at work making the trading post. And while they are doing that, we're going to have to think about where we might want our market to go. Our carts are... Okay, so one of these is already completely worn out. The carpentry is going to be the next thing that gets built, so we'll just have to uh, wait for that. But see, they still need a ton of wood. And it's uh, probably going to be a little bit of time before they have this whole thing built. But it is very slowly progressing. So we'll check on that periodically. Our well is actually getting pretty low, surprisingly. So we will uh, have to consider building another one in a minute. We just need to have, you know, more people. So as far as sewing goes, that's done. That one's in progress. And they'll get to those when they have the time. So that is very good. As long as this field is fully... Uh, tree removed, I guess. By the end of May, we should be able to plant something. I should probably actually look up when that hard cutoff is for the planting season. But I'm not super worried about it. We'll get a decent yield, even though we don't have plowing, just by virtue of the size of the fields. And hopefully by the end of harvest time, we'll have some immigration so we can have people help with that harvest. And there's still a little bit of water here. That's fine. Yeah, this is just going to be a monumental slog getting this building built because it uses so many resources but we are going to need those resources pretty quick so while they're taking care of that there's not too much more we can actually do because so much of what we are needing to accomplish is bound by not having a carpentry or a cow shed or a farm with stuff at it but what we can do is go ahead and think about where we're going to put the market like i just said i'm envisioning this as kind of a town center area i'm probably going to put the town hall in this general area because the you know the mayor does live here so i was thinking maybe our marketplace could be generally around here and if you remember my last let's play we had very modular markets where we had the the granaries if i can remember where they were we had them kind of like bookending all the different market stalls so i like that uh design but i don't think it's going to work well thematically everywhere in this iteration of the town so we can go ahead, one, because these get built instantly no matter what, we can go ahead and put in some market stalls just in the general environs of where we're going here. So I was thinking, just in this general area, we can put in a couple of them, and we can put a couple others somewhere else as well. This will still be well within range. So we'll go ahead and think about what we might want to have here. Of course, we can't actually purchase any of the homegrown crops until we have a granary fully uh, taken care of here. But what we can go ahead and do is the same thing we've always been doing, just kind of get these things set up the way we know how, just because that's an easy way to do it, honestly. We're not going to have chickens for a while, but eh, I'm not worried about it. Cucumbers, dried fish, we won't have firewood is an important thing to be selling, so that's good that that's there. And we're going to go ahead and find a spot for a couple of other market stalls as well. Remember, they don't have to be perfectly placed, and they can go in a couple different places. I just, at this exact moment, am trying to figure out the most optimal way to get things rolling here in a relatively organized fashion, but not necessarily completely beholden to a grid or anything like that. So, this last one we put in was cucumber, fish, uh, firewood, red fish. So we'll start over here at flower. This one will be honey. We don't have any of this stuff yet, but I'm just going to keep going right down the line just so we don't miss anything else. Button and onions. The next one will start with pork. Unless I click the wrong thing, then it will actually start with pork. Potato, raspberries, 
and sallow. So we have, I believe, four more left just for the sake of having this available. Go ahead and put some here. And I think this one stopped at sallow. Yes, it did. So now we'll do salt, shoes, sunflower oil, and warm clothing. And that will take care of all of this stuff. We aren't going to be hiring anyone here quite yet because the women are still planting, sewing rather. Okay, so we can actually get this one going as well, which will be fantastic. We'll advance this to here. Actually, no, we can go ahead and advance this one to fallow and just call that because then that'll keep the rotation with these three fields. One will always be fallow of these three and then every, at least four rather, one will always be fallow a couple years one might, two might be fallow. Yeah. Then these two, it'll be quite some time before they're fallow. Man, stuff is going tremendously well, except our camp carts are all completely broken. They need nails. We have plenty of nails stored up, so I'm actually going to get rid of this guy from the smithy and add him as a builder. Just so we have the ability to get stuff done because we really need to get this trading post done before we can do too much else. We will, uh, we'll see what happens. Of course, we're going to take the time to save again. There we go. Not quite willing to turn autosave back on just yet, but uh, we have to make sure we're having our stuff taken care of here. Nobody's looking for a job, which is fantastic. We've got stuff planting and growing already, which is good. Yeah, so they should be just about done. As soon as the women are finished planting, I'm going to go ahead and stock all of the markets with workers and make sure this is all set up as well. Apply to all. Then we'll hire women only just because we need them to, you know, work the market. We should have maybe not enough to have every single market stall stocked with... Why do I keep saying stocked? Staffed. But, uh, We'll get there. We have enough to fully man most things, fully woman most things. I don't know, gendered language is dumb. They almost have all the wood. I guess they're probably still waiting on wood to keep building some of this. So hopefully they're able to take care of most of that. I know the men are doing what they can to get that done. And we're still in pretty good shape, even though it is June and we haven't got trading set up. We do have the farm fully planted and that will be harvest in the fall which will be in good shape. We don't need any more houses right now because we can't do migration anyway because we don't have food for sale and we're not going to have food for sale until after the harvest. So we probably won't get, or at least not until after part of the harvest or we're able to import from the trading post. But now they have all the resources collected and they can start to supply the carpentry. And now it's just a matter of, you know, actually building this thing so we can watch them do their work or try to do their work or some degree of that. And hopefully they'll have this done pretty quick because we have money and we can actually import some food and get those markets off and running. Again, I just love watching this stuff get built. Hopefully you do too, because we're going to be doing a lot of it, at least for the first couple episodes. And the sound effects are nice too. Of course, when you only have five or six guys building, it tends to go a little slower than when you have 30. But, you know, that's fine. That's just the way things go. the scaffolding right here. I guess I never paid attention to this, but look at look how realistic the scaffolding is. And it's got ramps going to different levels and it's even got boards stretched across stuff. It doesn't just intersect. I love that. What other game is going to give you this amount of detail in this mind-boggling specificity? Look at this. I can't get over it. It's just so well constructed. 
you can tell they really, really do love the game. They're just about done. All right, so let's go ahead and pause really, really quick. Because we have the world map. We can trade with Dirkachi uh, Balaklia, I think. I'm sorry, I, I'm bad at pronouncing Eastern European names. And then Marifa. So if I remember correctly, these people have chickens. Uh, these people have salt. We're not going to buy salt because we can make it and we're going to start making it maybe next episode. We'll see. I believe... Oh, I don't have a manager at the trading post, so I guess this is all kind of moot. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, that's, they're only going to hire men here anyway. So I think once they hire a manager, I'll be able to send messengers out. And more importantly, they can start building this carpentry. Finally. Do I have somebody working here yet? No. So we'll kill, well not kill, we'll cut one of the, uh, one of the builders and hopefully they'll go work at the trading post. Hopefully. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. We've already got a lot of the hay barracks, uh, mostly full. So that's a good problem to have when we start building our cow sheds and our sheep farms and everything pretty soon. We'll have a, a good amount of stuff to, uh, mess with there. We still have a little bit of iron, so we're not in dire straits just yet, but it's it's going to be getting there pretty quick if we don't get some trade stuff in. So I, I really need somebody to go into this trading post. So if this guy will just go work there, that would be absolutely wonderful. Could even be an issue if it's too far from his house. I don't know. I never really paid that much attention to it. So hopefully... Yeah, okay, there we go. We have a manager. Let's go to the world map. Go ahead and send a messenger to all of these places and see what we can get because the game does not care if you run out of money. So we're going to brutally exploit that mechanic or oversight, whatever it might be, and get stuff imported here. And we don't have anything to export yet, so I'm not worried about that. Go ahead and hire a worker. Let's see if they're able to uh, take care of all that. And we got a guy here. So that's going to be good as soon as we have our messengers complete their journeys. And this guy's going to get here first in just a moment. We'll take care of that when he arrives, see what they have offering for sale, and hopefully have enough to get our uh, our stuff figured out here. So we'll go ahead and hire women for all of these, maybe. I guess it's not going to let me unless I specifically hire them. That's fine. I don't know if I have enough women to staff all of these. Looks like I do. Okay, we'll go ahead and slow down just for a minute here. They have cows, pigs, iron, horse, sheep, lime, charcoal, and nails. So not super helpful. We do need cows, but the cow shed is not yet built. The carpentry is built, but I want to make sure this cow shed gets built. Because the uh, messenger will be there for 26 more days. 25, I guess, now. And if the cow shed is almost built... By the time the cows would get here, the cow shed will be built and hopefully stocked. So that will be uh, within good reason for us to purchase cows. And I don't know if we're going to get there just quite yet. So let's see what Dirkachi's got. They've got salt, lime, leather, metal parts, iron, pigs, cows, horses, flour. We're going to go ahead and buy a bunch of flour. Sallow, we'll buy a bunch of sallow, dried fish to eat. And potatoes, we don't need to buy because we're going to harvest those pretty quickly. Now, metal parts we're going to buy for our carts. We're going to go ahead and buy iron. We're going to be stupendously in debt for a little bit, but I want to make sure we have everything we need to get uh, our town taken care of here. Salt we don't need at this exact moment in time. Yeah, Marifa has chickens, hemp, wheat, honey, more metal parts. We're definitely buying those. Broadcloth, warm clothes, and horses. We don't have any warm clothes. I don't want to buy a thousand of them. We'll go ahead and buy, say, 100, just so we have those so our people don't die. You know, they'll be kind of inconvenient. They're going to be here for 10 more days, and doesn't look like the cow shed's going to be ready by then. But we will get our money back if the cows can't be delivered. So that will be interesting to see just how quickly they can build this. I do have to keep this guy employed here so he can actually, you know, unload the wagons. Which is unfortunate. I guess it's probably not, uh... I guess it is harvesting season. 
So the manager actually might be uh, harvesting. I don't know. Are there any women looking for jobs? No. Okay, so which one of these has stuff that no one is going to be able to buy? This one. So you're fired. Uh, you are also fired. Uh, you are mega fired. I mean, I guess really all of these probably don't have anything to uh, purchase. But we need to get stuff harvested here. Okay, why are these wagons leaving? Okay, no, they actually unloaded, so that's fine. That is a-okay. Okay, so our people, the first people with cows left, they're going to be here for three more days. I, I, I really want to get cows. I really want to go, go ahead and get cows, but I just can't. 16 days distance. Can they build a cow shed in 16 days? See, I just, I don't, I don't see it happening, but, uh, you know, I want to believe. Oh, and they came right back anyway. So now we have another 28 days, so we can actually wait a little bit more time. That seems, seems like we're going to be in pretty good shape. So we can go ahead and turn this back on 12 times speed because I am extremely impatient sometimes. And I just want stuff to be happening here. I always love watching them unload stuff here. Mostly because these wagons just all mesh together and it looks crazy and there's some sort of you know, death metal concert windmilling happening with the, uh, the oxen on the carts here. This one poor guy is just relentlessly unloading carts all by himself because I guess the managers in this game don't really ever do anything. But that's fine. We are we're getting there. We got 21 more days before this cow shed has to be complete. And they have all the resources, so they can probably actually start building now. Which is a good look. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Go ahead and get this thing all taken care of, and we'll be in good shape. We got two and a half more weeks to get that taken care of. I love the uh, the clay buckets phasing into the foundation there. That is good stuff. Gotta love it. This should be done probably in another couple in-game days. We got two weeks. We are looking fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. This is wonderful seeing all this happen right here. That is all but complete. Just have to put the little spars and then the thatch and it'll be good to go. We are still going to wait, though, because this has to be stocked so the cows don't die. You know, that would be kind of inconvenient. Alright, so let's go ahead and pause. Just for the sake of making sure this is all set up correctly. Go ahead and max this out at 500. Put the water at 1,000, because why not? Nope. Put that fallow field if available. Go ahead and hire women only to work here, because we don't have the luxury of having a lot of men right now. Probably we'll fix that at some point later. Go ahead and hire at least two women to work. Hopefully, if they decide to be employed gainfully there. We still have seven days. So, because we aren't selling anything at this exact... Well, actually, that one's selling flour. This one's not going to have anything for a while. We'll go ahead and fire her. We've got potatoes and sallow here, so we got to keep her employed. Oh, uh, yeah. So now, hopefully... Yes, we have one woman working here, so she's going to be supplying stuff. That should be enough. We just have to make sure before this messenger leaves that we acquire at least... Oh wow, they got the whole gamut here. So we actually, if we really wanted to, we could buy a full uh, full set of cows. Four more days, three more days. And of course it's going to take time for the cows to get here in the first place, so... Yeah, okay, it's already supplied anyway, so let's go ahead and make that commitment there. We've got... Let's go ahead and pause the game. I can buy 20 cows, but I think I will buy 10 female cows. We'll buy one bull. We'll go ahead and get six of the oxen because those are immediately going to go to the farm. And that will have 17 cows total in the cow shed before all of the uh, oxen get converted into plows. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. And keep in mind, we're about to be super in debt, so if there's anything we're going to buy, we need to buy it right now. So go ahead and buy nails. Can't buy pigs or horses or sheep because we don't have anywhere to put them. Uh, charcoal, we have, we already have a ton of charcoal, which is great. So I think that's probably all we really can do. But this is already being stocked. It's looking fantastic. We've got stuff in the trading post that we can sell. So we can actually 
now start building more houses and have people move in. So for the sake of a little bit of realism, I'm going to put a farmhouse in this general area here. And we'll go ahead and just plop that down right there. And we'll go ahead and start building a fence around the backside of this farm here. And before we do that, I am going to go ahead and put in a big arch number two, because we love those oh so much here on this channel. Plop that guy right there. And then we'll come by with a farm themed fence. Not that one. Uh, fence number one, maybe. What's fence number three look like? I almost always, yeah, that's the one. That's exactly what we want. It's going to match those fences nicely. So we'll come out right like so, just right behind this house here. We'll plop this right here. And then we are going to go ahead and put another gate here because, well, one, we can. And two, it's going to need a gate because this is going to be accessed by the rest of the village here. So we'll plop that there. Go ahead and put this fence connecting right there. Have this come out around the top of the farm. And then have this just connect to the side of the building here. That's going to be close enough for our purposes. So it just adds a little bit of realism here to have, well, one of these trees are going to have to come down, but to have a house right next to the cow shed. And of course, we're going to have some hay barracks lined up as well, and then access from the rest of the town to come in here. And while we are doing that, we can go ahead and put in a couple more hay barracks. We're not going to cram them up in here like we did for some of these other ones. You know, just kind of somewhat realistically distribute things around places. I guess we could have one all the way down here if we really wanted to, but that would be kind of out of the way. I guess we could do another one in this general area here. Again, I don't want to have something too crazy looking. You know, just uh, just enough for it to be interesting, you know? Uh, so birch trees. I also wanted to explore maybe putting I if cottonwood trees would be better. There's a uh, I probably need to try and find a picture. If uh, So editing me, when you're editing this video, put this picture in here. But there's a uh, a couple of pictures from I guess the American Midwest where you have these farmhouses in these giant fields and they have these trees planted next to the house in kind of like a uh, almost like a perimeter is a windbreak. And I always thought that was pretty interesting that you have these uh, these trees as like a natural barrier, so to speak, to prevent the wind from, I guess, getting stuff all over the place in the house. Probably as a response to the Dust Bowl, in all honesty. Uh, all honesty. Uh, if any non-Americans watching, the Dust Bowl was a... I guess you could consider it kind of an ecological disaster caused by over-farming, where the ground was extremely barren and overworked, and then a bunch of wind and drought and all that stuff just whipped up all the dust from the ground and created the dust cyclones and stuff. And it was a it was a big problem in America in the early half of the 20th century. Uh, the John Steinbeck novel, Grapes of Wrath, is tied to the Dust Bowl. It's kind of like a historical fiction thing. It's That's a good read. I, hadn't, I think I read that in high school. But yeah, I digress. This is going to be a pretty nice area right here. Hopefully it's uh, a little bit more realistic than just me putting everything as closely together as possible. This episode is already getting pretty long, so we'll go ahead and get this sped up. We'll go ahead and save both of our little things here. And oh, it's October. We haven't harvested anything yet. Hold the phone, ladies and gentlemen. We have made a mistake. We're going to go ahead and uh, get rid of laborers and get rid of that. We will uh, just take care of that real quick. Get these people off of the market stalls so we can have, you know, our uh, farm stuff harvested. That was a major oversight on my part, getting bogged down in the, uh, the fun of designing little farm layout things. So now, let's see, what are the men doing? They're all building, no, 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 we're going down to one guy building, 
and we're going to have everybody go harvest the farm. Of course, except for our trading post guy, because, you know, he's uh, got to do a thing. And we've got cows. So I'm going to drag... Actually, I can't... I guess the carpentry has to go get the... Uh, has to go get the cattle to, uh, to do their thing. Oh, they are chewing through this hay. My lord. All right, I'm, I may have punked myself with, uh, with how this is set up here. The, uh, the jury will have to let us know shortly. Hopefully she can supply water at a satisfactory enough rate here. So I guess she's going to be pretty busy. we got to get this stuff harvested. It's going to be a race against time. No workers to thresh harvest. Well, uh, we'll just click that so it stops giving me that. But I mean, it's they're harvesting stuff, so that's about all you can ask for. We just don't have enough bodies because we haven't built this house yet. You know what? No. We're going to stop building because we absolutely have to have everything harvested. Everybody go work at the farm. Everybody go work at the farm. Everybody work at the farm. Let's go. We got a month and a week to get this stuff all taken care of here. Anybody else I can poach from uh, from working? I can't fire the mayor. Uh, do I have anything due in? I don't. So we can get rid of him. And we can get... Well, we probably shouldn't get rid of the uh, manager of the trading post. That might cause problems. But we are... Uh, eh, it's, it's fine. It'll be okay. We just have to get this stuff harvested. So I guess this is what we're doing now, is we are watching the harvest happen. Hopefully before the end of November. It's just uh, just one of those things I didn't think about. But hey, what would a, a Let's Play series of mine be without some really dumb mistakes? We can't check out what Marifa's got going on here. Uh, can't buy chickens yet. I wish I could. We're not selling anything. I really I can't do anything with any of this. Except metal parts that we have a ton of already. So I think we're okay. Yeah, we're, we're doing fine. We just have to get at least some of everything. They're going to start harvesting, hopefully, one of these other fields as well once they get all that taken care of. Or they can just focus on the wheat. I don't know. We need wheat. But we also could use sunflowers and hemp so we can start making sunflower oil. I guess that's not crucial, crucial. We might be okay without that for a little bit of time. Just, uh... Cow dying of thirst. Oh god. Okay, what did I do? We have water. Technically. So we shouldn't have any more cows dying of thirst, right? Is she uh, taking rest? Okay, we might actually be in trouble here. Let's see if that, uh, that helps. No? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go to work, go to work. Stock up the water so our cows don't die. Yes, milk the cows, supply resources, get the water. Please do not let the cows die. We don't have a slaughterhouse. We can't take advantage of any of this yet. Come on. All right, now we got two. Now there's no water, so they probably are going to start dying unless she supplies it right now. Okay. Awaiting water. I know this is a play-by-play -play that absolutely nobody asked for, but that's fine. Sometimes it's just fun to do uh, stuff like that. So we are probably not going to get all of our wheat and definitely not all of our sunflowers. So we only have uh, families moving out. Uh-oh. Couldn't get enough drinking water. Okay, well that is not great. Hopefully we don't have anybody else move out because we're going to be in pretty bad shape. And this is all going to disappear. Yep. Okay, so we didn't get any sunflowers, didn't get any flax. That is uh, not great. Not a great look. So this, uh, which one of these houses is empty? This one. Not enough food for sale. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we can do. If we can get rid of all of our laborers. We can fire all these women from the farm, except probably one. And we'll go ahead and hire them back at the places that actually, you know, have uh, stuff for sale. 
This one and this one. We'll see if that trips the food for sale thing. Should. It should. Should be okay. Yes. Okay, so now we can have another family move in here. Things looking reasonably okay. We'll go ahead and hire a builder. Um, why are they complaining no workers to thresh harvest? It'll be fine. We'll get somebody to come in here eventually. We just have to have another family move in because, of course, you know, migration is enabled. But I think we've gotten a lot done in our second episode. I apologize. This episode's going to be about 45, 46 minutes. So if you don't like long episodes, sorry. <laughs> but we got, a, we got a lot of stuff done. And it, it just continues to go poorly. Drinking water here. Yeah, so... We're, we're going to have to fix some stuff in episode 3, but... We're not in a, we're not in a bad spot. We do have houses available to move in, and we've fulfilled all the migration uh, limitations here. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up here for today, as we uh, look to the future and see what's going to happen next. This is a good time for me to remind you I do live stream Ostrov and other games on Twitch at twitch.tv/jcthebeard. I don't know when my next stream will be. Hopefully, sometime this weekend. Uh, as of the recording of this video on uh, September 10th is when this will go live. Hopefully sometime this weekend I can stream. Uh, I will post a notification here as a video when I do go live, in case you want to go check that out. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you coming in to take part of all the fun of playing this game for a second time on this new update cycle. But yeah, that's all we got for today. We will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.